I want you to do, buddy, is I want you to look right in the camera and say, hello, wine drinking people. Hello, wine drinking people. It's uh, April 23rd, Thursday. It's National Bring Your Kid to Work Day. This is my son, Antonio, and I uh, brought him to work today to show him the ropes, show him what daddy does every day and how hard that daddy works. So uh, this is uh, what I call, Antonio, what I drank yesterday. This is where Daddy tells all the folks at home about all the wines that he had to drink yesterday. Okay, well, yesterday we had a pretty busy day in the store. We had Wendy, sorry, Wendy, I mean Linda, in from Republic National yesterday with the folks from Montgras. Montgras is a winery from Chile, which Antonio and I had a chance to visit Chile just a year and a half ago. Uh, I've been telling people at home for the last, since I got back, there is not a better place in the world where you can find Bordeaux varietals than South America. When you're looking at value, Chile and Argentina provide some of the greatest values in this arena. Bordeaux varietals being Cabernet Merlot uh, and <clears throat> Cabernet Franc are the three main ones. We had a Bordeaux tasting it last night at Cafe Max. I can't tell you how many people think Cabernet is the main grape in Bordeaux. They have a couple other grapes they grow, Petit Verdot and Malbec, and just small percentages. And then there are called what the, the like the lost grape varietals, Carmenere, which is one of them, which after Phylloxera they did not replant. This is the grape varietal that makes up, uh, well, it's the great red hope of Chile, Carmenere. And uh, the best expression of this varietal comes from Chile, just like the best expressions of Malbec come from Argentina. Montgras is a winery that produces some outstanding values. Uh, the winery is actually located in the Colchagua Valley, uh, but the Sauvignon Blanc is from the San Antonio Valley. Uh, which is a little better for crisp and aromatic whites and Pinot Noirs and other things like that. So uh, we, we've got some nice wines in this lineup. You want to check out the reviews. On all the inexpensive wines, they're kind of, uh, I don't want to say average uh, quality for Chilean wines, but they're average quality for Chilean wines. The Reservas starting to make a step up here, and then the wines from the label Vigna Ninquin, absolutely excellent. One of the problems with Chilean wines to me is the stuff you find in the mid-tier is almost just as good as the high quality, the highest quality wines, which a lot of times are two or three times the price. So uh, the Ninquin wines, the uh, Antua label, the Syrah and the Cabernet Carmenere to me were by far the best values in this lineup. Wines that you can buy, $20 a bottle, a great wine you can pop open any day and not feel uh, bad about it. And uh, you can keep these wines open for two or three days. They're just going to get better. Better. The Antigua was good, and then, uh, like I said, the other high-end wines were nice, but uh, to me, not worth the upcharge. Okay, next up, we had Stephen Sherwood in the store, and Stephen stopped by, uh, surprise, more Chilean wines. Sometimes when it rains, it pours. Well, he did have one New Zealand wine, the Tahua Kona Sauvignon Blanc. Antonio, are you getting all this stuff? Okay, light and refreshing style. Typical New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, maybe not as fruit cocktail-y as some. And then the Mission is wine from Chile, another very good value. Did you get them, buddy? Yes. All right, good job. Okay, uh, so nothing earth-shattering there, just some good everyday values. And then Jeff Weston from Transatlantic stopped in to taste a mixed bag of wines, beginning and ending with the Trelato family wines. This is the family uh, that owns uh, Trelato uh, out of Chicago. They import Santa Margarita, big, big bucks. And uh, their wines from Napa Valley are getting much better. The Chardonnay was very good, ripe tropical fruit, uh, and had some lovely toasty oak spice. And still very good freshness at the end, very well balanced. Uh, this wine's a pretty good value at around 30 bucks. And then we went into Bordeaux, actually one of the wines we had last night, Omadoc Varignan. Very nice little value at $15. Uh, typical what you'll find from the 03 vintage, very fruit forward, very drinkable. I'm not boring you to death, am I, buddy? What? Okay, just wanted to make sure you're still with me. Okay, and then Il Poggione, Brunello di Montalcino Reserva. Uh, this wine was outstanding. 2003, more of a forward and fruity style vintage from Brunello, but this wine had it all and lots of it and a long finish. Uh, great wine and a relative value when you look at what the 04 Reservas are coming out at. That's what we're drinking tomorrow night in the store. Brunello's, unfortunately, that tasting is sold out. Uh, the Luna Cab 07 was the star of the show in this lineup yesterday. Those of you that had the 2005 know what I'm talking about. This wine, one of the best values that we had in the store last year for Cabernet Sauvignon. The 07, I think it's taking it up a little bit of a notch. This wine may be a little young, but still it had it all. Big black cherry, cassis berry fruit of the nose, toasty oak spice, lovely chocolate and espresso notes. Very complex, big and chewy on the tongue. This wine definitely needs a little time. Lots of concentration here, lots of tannins, nice long finish. 
uh, at $37 on sale this year. This wine is one of the best Cabernets that I've had all year in this price category. Uh, the Trollado episode, the last wine from Trollado. You know, not as impressive as the first because you look at the price on this wine, $190 a bottle. Bam, pow, you want this wine to just do something spectacular for you when you put it in your mouth. And it was good, but the Luna to me was a step up and much less expensive. Okay, well, the Bordeaux tasting last night was kind of a train wreck. I apologize for all you people that came to it. I don't know what I was thinking when I organized this event, how we went about pouring it, but I think it was still somewhat successful. We had 40 people there, and uh, we had a lot of nice wines. Uh, and you can look through the list that we had here today. One of the one of the, 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 the top wines of yesterday, big surprise, the Espirit de Chevalier, the wine that I've been talking about all week. Uh, outstanding again last night. And then the Doise Vendrines, 2007 Sauternes. 2007, not a very highly regarded vintage in Bordeaux. Are you getting all this, buddy? Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, when you have a bad vintage for the Reds, a lot of times the conditions are very good for Sauternes. This is what happened in 2007. And this wine rocks probably the best. One of my wines of the night last night. And I'm sorry, you guys, that you only got a tiny pour. We were supposed to get full bottles, not half bottles. And I can't believe we made it around the whole entire room with those half bottles. But we sold more of that than any wine last night. It was a big hit. Uh, okay. So uh, what have we got to sell you today? Well, today... We've got a cooking class to promote next week with Chef, the Sombrero Chef, Oliver Saucy. You know that guy? No. Chef Oliver Saucy? No. Come on, buddy. You know Ollie from Cafe Max? Ollie and Annie and Eric? Yes. And Tommy? Okay. <laughs> Just trying to keep him in, involved here. Uh, yes, uh, and that is going to be the Cinco de Mayo class. You can bet we'll be serving wine with that and probably margaritas. All right, folks, that's all we've got for you today. Thanks for watching. This is Andrew and Antonio Lampasone signing off for the Wine Watch, saying, remember, always drink the good stuff first. Buddy, can we get a remember, always drink the good stuff first? Yes. Can, can you say, remember, always drink the good stuff first? Always drink the good stuff first. Okay, good job. <laughs>